Hey guys, before we get this video started, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all the people that are liking, commenting, subscribing on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. It's such a good response I've had to these videos so far. So keep on doing that. And if you haven't already, then go over, go, go let me know what you're thinking, how you're feeling, what you think about primary school teaching. It's just so good to build such a big community and such a responsive community already. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Make sure you guys, if you haven't already, get that comment in there, drop that like, let me know what you're thinking. And anyway, on to our top five tips on classroom management. Let's go see what tip number one is. Tip number one of classroom management. And remember, these are not tips to do with behavior in your classroom. These are not things where in a child are misbehaving, you can use to bring them back down from that level of misbehavior. These are tips to prevent that misbehaving from happening even before they get there. They're things to keep your classroom running in a smooth, efficient routine, and I hope it will help you get as much learning done in the shortest time as possible. So yeah, tip number one is using this poster. Now, this poster says hand signals, and quite clearly it is something I use in the classroom for when children need to go to the bathroom, need to get a tissue, they might need to have a question or an answer for me, if they need to fill their water bottle up. I use these hand signals for them to tell me and let me know that. This might not seem like a very big thing, but actually this has been one of the best things I've brought into my classroom throughout my whole teaching career so far. Hand signals reduce disruption so much. These are the best things I've introduced. They keep the level of disruption to a minimum because when a child needs a toilet, they put number one up in the air without saying a word. I just look at them and go, again, without saying a word, and off they go to the toilet. I know immediately when children have got their hands up, which child needs help, which one doesn't understand something, which one just needs a tissue or a toilet and can just quickly go do it. I don't need to have that conversation with them. And the other children, they're all getting on if they're doing some writing. They aren't distracted by that conversation that we're having. Absolutely, number one, introduce some sort of hand signal in your class so when children know they need to go to the toilet, know they need a tissue, they can do that without disrupting the rest of the classroom. This will just help everything run so much more smoothly and hopefully you guys will see a massive increase in terms of your work and the amount of work that's produced just from lack of disruption in the classroom. Tip number two is all about your consistency. So making sure, you know, you set the rules in your classroom and they can be whatever fits your school policy, whatever fits your style of teaching, whatever fits your class. But the one thing I'd say tip number two focuses on is being consistent in those rules. So if on the first day when the kids come into school, there's no talking during the register, then two weeks down the line, don't start letting that slip. Don't start saying, oh, well, they're really chatting a little bit, so it's okay. If there's no talking during the register, there's no talking during the register. That can never change. You can't have one day where they're allowed to have a chatter, the next day, absolutely not, no talking, full stop, because the poor children will get so confused, they won't know what to do. That's where they start getting those words like, unfair, life's not fair, this isn't fair on us. And in a way, they'll be right. If they don't know what your expectations are of them, then how on earth are they meant to hit them? So set your expectations out, set them high, low, wherever you want to set them, but keep them at that level. You can't just say, one day we'll be fine doing this, the next day, oh my, you can't do that at all. You've got to be consistent in your expectations. So things like water bottles. If the children have water bottles on their desk, be consistent with when they can have a drink. If they're at the side by the sink, then be consistent in one minute, when they're in from break time, go get them, then sit down. Be consistent in your approach to all of your classroom expectations. That consistency will again help the smooth running of your classroom and make sure everyone knows what type of things that they need to be doing to be getting on with the work, to be making sure that you're impressed with the work they're doing and doing the best for them. This is all the same with other adults in your classroom. Be consistent with your expectations of what they're doing during each day. And again, you'll be working as a much better team, getting along, getting everything done that you need to do. Tip number three is all about the first 10 minutes of every single lesson. So in a primary school, the first 10 minutes are the most vital. This may be true in secondary school. I'm a primary school teacher. I know it is true in primary school. The first 10 minutes are absolutely vital for any lesson. You need to make sure when the kids are walking into your classroom, you're on the door saying hello to every single one of them. When they're doing their morning work for the first 10 minutes in the morning, you're wandering around the classroom, having a chat with every single child in there. This doesn't have to be a long one. It's literally a, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? How was breakfast this morning? How's your parents doing? How's your sister doing? It's just building those relationships, talking about something they're interested in. Did you play FIFA last night? 
Are you on your Xbox? Are you on your PlayStation? What are you doing? You know, just building those relationships with the kids and straight away from that 30 second conversation, you can see which children are coming bubbling away with excitement, which children are coming feeling a bit down, which children aren't feeling very well, which children have had a rough night's sleep and so are gonna be a bit tired that day. Straight away, 30 seconds, you've got that little bit of information to help you with that child that day. I cannot tell you the first 10 minutes of your morning are the most important 10 minutes of your entire day. So make sure those 10 minutes, you're happy, you're bubbly, you're excited to be there. And hopefully those kids will be reflecting that. If they're not reflecting that, then you can go there and find out why. Get those 10 minutes, talk to them, give them a chance to explain themselves. And hopefully you can move forward with that and know the strategies you've got to use to make sure they get the best out of that school day. Now, obviously, this is a 10 minute rule for every single lesson and you can't go around having a chat with the kids at the start of every single lesson. But it's the same thing applies to standing on the door. So after the dinner bell, after break time in the morning, stand on the door when the kids walk back into class. Again, you just be like, hi, how are you doing? Enjoy your break time. What was it like? Did you guys play football? Anyone that comes in with a frown on their face, anyone that just whizzes past you without talking. Straight away, you just got that little fly going, oh, yeah, just need to go check in with that child. Anyone that might have got in trouble at break time and is upset about it, you know why that's happened. Talk to the lunchtime staff if you've not been outside. Make sure they let you know what's gone on. And straight away, you've got those incidents that you need to deal with before the learning can begin. Again, it's just, it's the first five, first 10 minutes. Get yourself with the kids, talking to them, building those relationships. Tip number four is all about building relationships with your children in the class. So building those relationships, making sure you know the types of things that make them tick, make them go round. You know little Jimmy, that absolute man about football. You know little Sophie who wants to be an astronaut. You know little Ellie who wants to one day fly away and become a pilot. You know little Jeremy who is always, always going on about how he wants to become a dentist. Now, obviously they're all made up names, they're all made up ambitions, but your kids will have those same ambitions, those same thoughts, those same feelings. You need to get yourself on that level to be able to talk to them about it. You know, if there's one that's mad about football, make sure you know what's going on in the world of football. So when they come in the morning, you can show you're interested in them, show you're ready for the day, talk to them about what happened last night in the cup. If there's someone mad about being an astronaut, then you know what? NASA space missions, okay? Go research them. Ar Artemis is coming up soon. There's a kid in my class who absolutely loves space, and I know all about the Artemis space missions that are going on soon to land the first woman on the moon. Now, I can't say I'm massively interested in the space, but I researched that, so I know I can talk about that with that kid, show I'm interested. I've learned to juggle while I've been a primary school teacher. Not because I have any massive interest in juggling, but because I know that's a way I can talk to the kids. I can start juggling some tennis balls, so while there might be a child that's not feeling the best, they might be upset, distract them, do some juggling, talk to them, show them how to do it, get on their level, build that relationship with the kids. This is something that I use to help the children. I use it to build that relationship, to show them that I'm interested in what they do. And I genuinely am. I genuinely want to help them, which always helps. But it's a tool I use to make sure they're settled and ready for their learning. So yeah, relationships with the kids, you can't get enough of them. You need them with every single one in your class. Make sure you're using the facts you know, these random facts to build, re relate to them and get involved in what they're interested in. My final tip for this video is all about your presentation of yourself, okay? When you walk into a classroom, you need to present yourself as the boss of that classroom. Children have this knack of automatically knowing who is in charge in the classroom. So present yourself as the boss, the person who is in charge no matter what. It doesn't matter if the teacher assistant in there with you has got 25 years more experience from you, you're gonna walk in there and you're going to show the kids that actually you're the one in charge, you know what's going on, okay? Now, teaching in this sense is all about acting. You are showing that. You might not feel that inside. I certainly didn't on my first week, month, even possibly year of teaching. But you can't let the kids see that because as soon as the kids see that you don't know what you're doing, they're going to start thinking, well, if you don't know what you're doing, how am I meant to know what I'm doing? And it just spirals from there. So present yourself as the boss, the leader, the one in charge of the classroom, and the kids will soon follow I don't mean by that, go in, be rude, be shouty, be mean, anything like that. You are showing them through your voice that you do not mean, finish when you're ready guys, okay? You're going three, two, might be doing it while you're busy, one, yeah, we're right over there. We're getting there, zero, doesn't mean anything, okay? 
You need to show them in every action you do that you are the one in charge and you know what you want. You know your expectations and you are, your expectations are meant to be met. The children are going to test these and you need to show them that you are the boss. You know your expectations and you need them to be met. As soon as you know this and as soon as the kids realise this, the better your teaching experience will be because they will be on it. They'll be rushing through the work. They'll be getting it done. You'll be working with them to get the most out of it. But there has to be those expectations. So stand tall at the front of the classroom. Make sure the kids look at you, eyes on you. You know what you're doing. Even if inside you're running around like a donut, you know that on the outside you're cool, calm and ready for the day. They're my top five tips on classroom management. These are tips to implement in your classroom before behaviour begins. No matter who's in your class, every single day, be on that door, welcoming the kids into the classroom, showing them you care. No matter who's in your classroom, make sure you're consistent on your expectations. It doesn't matter if the head teacher's in there or not, you always tell the kids they've got two minutes to have a drink from their water bottle. It doesn't matter if the head teacher's in or not, you always have no talking during the register. Make sure that throughout your teaching, you are being clear and consistent with your expectations of the kids. Make sure that with your voice, you are projecting that authority in it, okay? The kids know you're the boss, you're the one they need to listen to to do the best they can. Now, I hope this has helped you. And as always, guys, in the comments down below, leave any questions you might have, any tips you might be wanting, any advice I can give you, I will happily, happily give you. As you can see on the screen flashing up right now, there's all these different comments on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube that I've been getting and responding to every single one of these that you can see. And yeah, I'm just loving, loving, loving building this community. So keep it up, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. And as always, every Tuesday, every Saturday, new video. So I hope you enjoy it. And I hope I will see you guys very soon on this channel. So yeah, thanks, guys. See you soon.